500 years ago, there were people on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean, but neither knew about the other. On the western side, our side, the people had reddish-brown skins and lived in huts or wigwams. On the eastern side, in Europe, the people were white-skinned. They had learned how to build houses and large sailing ships, but they still didn't know much about the rest of the world. In fact, most of them believed the earth was flat. Then one day, a map maker named Christopher Columbus had an idea. Do you know what? I think the world isn't flat at all. I think it's round like a ball. Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? He said that the world is round. Oh, he's crazy man. I think the world isn't flat at all. I think it's round like a ball. The world was flat in the brim of your hat, and that is very plain. I know that I'm right. Oh, I know that I'm right when I say that the world is round. Oh, I'm right. No more. I'm right. My thinking is sound, and I'll prove the world's round. It won't take very long. Hello. Guys, like some information about the flat Earth. There's not a spinning globe like they tell us on TV. All pictures of globes are CGI. Have you uh, heard about the flat Earth? No. That kind of movement? No? Uh, well, there's a lot of misinformation out there regarding the subject. If you Google it, you'll generally get about 100 pages of misinformation, spreading a lot of disinfo, uh, like the Flat Earth Society, that's, that's not who we are, that's completely uh, government psyop, we believe, um, we don't believe the Earth is a disk accelerating through space, we don't believe space is at all, like they show us on TV and the movies, mm -hmm. uh, stars, planets, all the celestial bodies, none of it is as they show you in the films and pictures. If you look at it with your own eyes and a high zoom uh, lens, you'll see that um, they, they just look like lights in the sky, flickering kind of like semantics and stuff. So uh, you look out at the Lake Ontario there, it's completely flat. You know, the horizon line where the sky meets the earth is always flat. No matter how high you fly in a plane, it's flat um, and undisturbed, it's motionless. So planes they don't adjust for curvature you know so when you when you really start to think about like okay if you think this is where you live you have to ask yourself i'm asking you to question that why you believe that essentially right and most people have no idea about the own model they believe in right um but there's no measurable curvature uh there's no detectable motion of the earth in fact there's not one single test no scientific test to prove that the earth is moving in fact, all evidence and all tests have proven that the Earth is motionless and proved that ether exists. Uh, if you check into the 1887 experiment, Michelson Morley, uh, Mitchelson Gale, Aries Failure, all these experiments have proved that the Earth is motionless and ether exists. So, you know, it comes down to the turning points of science when guys like Einstein came out and had to abolish the ether in order to make space time curvature and relativity. Uh, stick basically uh, per se to the ball and to make water stick to the ball uh, so you cannot demonstrate water sticking to a ball you know uh, you can say gravity all that is essentially is relative density and uh, dielectric uh, acceleration possibly right so there's no evidence that water is being held to the earth by some magical force uh, called <laughs> gravity right and just you can't demonstrate it right like yeah. things fall because they're heavier than air right um, so I can dump water on this ball, on this globe, and it'll just fall off. So gravity's still here, even if it's a bigger constant, you know, model. It's, there's still gravity, if, as they call it, everywhere. So you cannot demonstrate water sticking to a ball. If you, like a washing machine cycle, you spin it, and centrifugal force causes the water to go outward. It will fall off, right? So unless it's being held in some sort of container, some kind of force, uh, so... Whether there is a such firmament that exists, as explained in the Bible, which does say that the earth is uh, motionless and uh, four, has four corners and whatnot. I'm not a biblical person, but I do believe in a creator. absolutely believe in intelligent design. Many religions do speak of the motionless earth. Um, but, the, you know, many texts will show us and observations will show us it's flat and motionless, right? Um, so, 
Any questions? Uh, like, no, I'll, I'll have to go through this. Yeah, story. please do. I mean, don't. I certainly don't want you to just believe me. I'm just here trying to provoke thought. I'm certainly not trying to tell you what to think. I'm merely just trying to get you to think for yourself, right? Because we're not claiming to have the answers. We're not no flatter society making up crap. We're we're just saying be open-minded and don't believe what you're told. There's so much disinformation online. Right. You can't. That's why I'm out here because people can't look to the internet to find real information now. It's completely right. censored. The algorithms on Google are telling you what to think, pointing you where to go. Hey girls, would you like some information? Yes, yes we would. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, it's take very care. interesting. Yeah? yeah you go she have thinks one the earth but I, I do. do. I watch Shane Dawson's videos. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah I've watched a couple of his videos. Unfortunately, he's a, a populator to certain topics, though, so... But he seems quite open-minded yeah, when airplanes. he came into like, it. How do the airplanes, like... I saw this they thing... They don't adjust for curvature. I saw this thing, and it was like... One time, they, there was this plane, and they had to make a pit stop, and they stopped somewhere that would in only the northern make sense hemisphere. on the flat yep. Earth map. Yep, just like this, right? So flights generally in the southern hemisphere come into the northern hemisphere, and then back to the southern hemisphere, which doesn't make any sense if it's on a globe, it should just be going straight across. But uh, on a flat model, you can see they just go toward the north and then straight across. This is going to uh, Australia. I believe probably not. My science teacher made fun of me, but I didn't really care. Well, I mean, ask your science teacher to uh, to prove it's a globe, and I guarantee you he cannot. You know, he'll just spew a bunch of uh, preconceived notions and uh, you know, trying to use the theory of gravity, which is still a theory. Um, and actually, I, I would give you some information. You may hand to your science I teacher. Ask him. Ask her. Ask your science teacher what he thinks about the uh, Michelson Morley experiment, because it was the turning point for science in 1887. But most scientists, uh, science populators, don't even know about it. It proved that the Earth was motionless and the ether exists. So, you know, these, these are things that you just you can't debunk. We don't know all the answers. Yeah. We don't claim to have. We don't. We don't. We're not claiming Earth as a disk in space flying up. Yeah. We, we don't believe gravity is real at all, like they tell us. We believe gravity is relative uh, density and uh, dielectric acceleration, which is that Earth is a electromagnetic static plane and it has some sort of electrical charge to it, right? So what about like the sun and the planets, like in stars? Sure. Uh, well, the sun and moon, we believe, as they look, are very local. They're much smaller very much smaller you know that, that say the size of my fingertip would be with the size of the sun and the moon that rotate yin and yang uh, around the over the earth right and so that's how seasons make sense because the smaller object is from here like yin and yang it's light here but it's dark over here but once it reaches over here it's now dark there and oh, light over look here at right? that. so it's local sun explains seasons uh, and as you look up, you see the sun, you see the sun projects sun rays, specular rays through clouds. They triangulate. When you see, you ever seen the sun's triangulate rays up? Well, that's you point those in triangulation. It goes right back to a local. It's pointing to a local area, like a pyramid effect, right? That that screams local sun. The sun's radiant heat. When you feel the sun from morning to night to midday, midday it's it's hot using the sun, but dusk and dawn is a lot cooler. We can sun gaze. It only makes sense with a local sun that's moving further away from your perspective. If the sun was, as they claim, 93 million miles away, which, by the way, has never been proven, it's pure conjecture, it's a bunch of nonsense, they cannot prove the sun is as far as it is or is as big as it is. But all our observations, all tests, like I said, the radiant heat, the sun rays, it all shows it's local. So, you know, the celestial bodies, the planets, the stars, um, they're just lights in the sky right now, right? Uh, if you look at them through telescopes on your own, with your own eyes in um, high optical lenses, you'll see they look nothing like the pictures they show us on TV and the movies. That's all CGI. Try and look for a real photo of the, uh, of the stars or the planets. It's all CGI. Other than the real celestial body shots they'll show you from Earth. Like yeah. you'll see just the lights, but like yeah. a zoomed in photo. Of they show like say Saturn with a ring or Mars and like Jupiter, it's, like it's, it's really. all CGI. It's all yeah, and there's not even one real picture of the Earth. I know. I... You would think that uh, you know if they're showing pictures of Jupiter, it's having all these major storms going on for thousands of years. They say, but yet this picture we see of Jupiter is the same picture throughout <laughs> through over uh, 50 years. The storms the exact same. It hasn't changed. You know, it's it's just it's just simply a painting. It's. You can't prove these things are real. Look at you! You're interested no. now! Because it's real facts! Okay. Is that something that space is fake? What does that yes. mean? Yes. Well, um, 
again, you know how all movies, especially Universal Pictures, they show you a globe uh, on their when the movie even starts. Well, they've had that globe since the 20s, and they haven't even had a picture since the 20s. So they've been trying to project the idea of it in space again through movies. It's all showing you space as seen on TV. That you go up there and they travel through stars and they live in a vacuum. But there's no evidence that their space is an infinite vacuum. There's no evidence that an infinite vacuum can exist beside an atmosphere of an enclosed system that we believe Earth is. Uh, there's no evidence that the stars exist as they tell us. So when I say space is fake, uh, again, try and look at real photos of satellites or stars. They're, they're all CGI, none of them are real. So when you look at a real, when they show you pictures of the globe, for instance, uh, there's no stars in the background. When you all amateur high altitude footage, which you can do for yourself, people can get together, put some money together, costs around a thousand bucks or so. You get a high altitude balloon, a camera, without a distorted lens, such as GoPro lens or a fisheye lensing. That gives that illusion of a curve, such as the Felix Baumgartner uh, jump from the stratosphere. It's, it was completely flat from when he actually lands, but when you look at the uh, caps of where he's leaving, it's a flat horizon, there's no stars, when you see him come out, all of a sudden, boing, you know, it's a, it's a, a fisheye lens showing you an imaginary curve, but it's actually the, only the size of New Mexico, which is the whole thing, and that New Mexico is not the size of the globe. So, um, again, all uh, my amateur footage shows no stars exist up there as they show us what they are. We don't know. They could be semantics. They could be, like, electrical flickering lights that somehow are projected through the atmosphere, uh, atmosphere plane as I like to call it now, because I don't believe it's spherical. Um, the firmament, as the Bible speaks of. Uh, I'm not a biblical person, but I absolutely believe in a creator, that God or creation exists, that we didn't evolve from monkeys. What the globe does is it's a basically a prison for your mind, because if you don't know where you live, you don't know where you're going, you don't know anything about our history, our past, which has all been rewritten since the printing press, right? You have to believe that if you don't have ever questioned your government, the governments of the world, and you start to realize, okay, moon landing is obviously a complete hoax. It's never been proven that they landed on the moon. It's nonsense to believe it. 9-11, you know, the terrorist attacks as they claim. There's no evidence terrorists flew planes into the buildings. There's no evidence of real planes. There's a lot of evidence to show it's completely controlled demolition. No buildings ever in history has collapsed like 9-11 did from fires, especially from jet fuel. Jet fuel cannot melt uh, I-beams, metal I-beams. Like these, this is not possible. Those buildings disintegrated and the official stories were the planes hit it and they hit it, they covered it up, got rid of all the rubble right away. Uh, if you watch any buildings have collapsed from a fire or, from, or sorry, from any kind of a collapsing period, not from fires essentially, they all topple on each other in like a pancake effect and that's how it should have looked when it was done. If you looked at the evidence in 9-11, it just it disintegrated and all eyewitnesses from uh, who were there in, in New York at the time all claim to hear explosions, yeah. multiple explosions, all footage shows in there's raw footage you can find of showing the explosions happening, you can hear them. Uh, no planes, so again, just getting you, trying to get you to question that governments lie and they're corrupted. And yeah. ever since 9-11, you've been controlled. Everywhere we travel, it has been forbidden, you know, freedom of travel. You are basically tra uh, treated like a terrorist when you want to go somewhere. So again, prison for your mind. You know, the world itself, they're fluoridating our water. If you ever look up and notice they spray the skies? Today it's actually pretty clear, but uh, like the, plane, the lines the in the sky, yeah, yeah. And it, that's geoengineering. That's not everyday, it's not just everyday planes. It's a fact that they do, uh, if you look it up, uh, stratospheric aerosol injections, they are spraying the skies, barium, strontium, aluminum. These are things that are very poisonous, cause diseases, cause all kinds of things. So when you start to, to study these things on your own, the climate change effects that are happening is very well man, I don't believe done through our cells contribute to it. There's no evidence the data shows that humans are causing it. It's these bastards who are spraying the sky who are causing weird reactions with mother nature. Uh, I do believe the change in weather patterns is absolutely normal. But to what degree, like the forest fires, the droughts that are happening, yeah. these things are being manipulated. Uh, and so when you start to look at we're being taxed for climate change now, all this stuff, yeah. it, again, it's just another control mechanism, right? I mean, the fluoridated water, again, that it's just makes people docile. At no point can you prove uh, fluorosilic acid, a corrosive acid, 
fluoridation in our water system is healthy for you. It's, it's not at all. It's, you know, osteoporosis is caused through it, uh, you know, disintegrates the bone basically, yeah. you know, uh, clogs your pineal gland, which is basically your sixth sense. Um, if you ever believe in spiritual beings or the idea of anything, there's a lot to take in, girls. I in a I get, lot of stuff. That's cool. I mean, uh, I'm not, again, I. I Hard to, it's easy to digress and uh, it's, uh, I mean, Look, bombard you with a lot of stuff. We'll you do, yeah. yeah. Thank look you into so it. much. Don't Thank believe you. me. Don't okay. don't fear the truth. <laughs> Gentlemen, hey. how you doing? Good, good, good. Uh, Can I offer you some information? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, sure, man. It's a big statement of this flat, right? It's so, uh, all. Um, sorry, what did you say there? So what are the facts that are this flat? Like what proves the art is flat? Uh, it's more like uh, the the non-facts that the Earth is a globe, you know? Okay. Because yeah. uh, essentially, Earth is an ob uh, flat Earth is an observation, right? The globe Earth is the claim the Earth, that the Earth is a globe and it's spinning. That's pure propaganda, just like that big globe right behind you there. They're trying to show you every day. That's propaganda. Um, why water always lays flat? Everywhere you look, on oceans, lakes, water is always flat. You will never okay. see a bulge in the water. We can see way too far. We can see Toronto skyline from here straight across. The entire thing pretty much. The entire sky dome, which is about 280 feet. We can see the whole thing. You can see the entire, entire uh, Chicago skyline across the ocean. Um, from where? Uh, well, from the state side. From Michigan and stuff, right? But, um, uh, well, actually from many observational points actually. Okay, I have one question, all right? So the flat art says that, you know, in the edge of the art, right, there's like a, there's like a snow, no, 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 like ice wall, right? Have anyone been there? Possibly, yeah. But have anyone been there? Is there pictures of it? Uh, yep, there is actually many pictures of the ice wall. Um, if you were to look up uh, Admiral Ber Richard Admiral Berg in the 50s, he had flown over to the south slash south pole, but I don't, there's no evidence there is actually a pole. All comes this point north. Uh, so we believe that Antarctica is actually a wall of ice. Mm -hmm. It's actually just a region of ice that surrounds the uh, continents of Earth and the water's ocean, the Earth's oceans. Uh, and the idea that he had explained that there is uh, land beyond with plenty of resources that we could use. And after this point, uh, the Federal clear. Reserve, or sorry, not the Federal Reserve, the uh, United Nations had uh, formed what's called the Antarctica Treaty. So anything past the 60th parallel, we aren't allowed to freely explore for ourselves. But there is a lot of evidence that uh, the government goes down there uh, all the time, and there is evidence of other regions through ancient histories and stories like the Iron Republic from the 1900s, stories that people have traveled there and discovered that there is in other regions. But do you have any There's pictures maps. or like any sources that I can There is pictures right of the ice wall. You can definitely, uh, just type in pictures of Antarctica and you'll see that it just looks like a big wall of ice on the shores of Antarctica. Well, there are mountains, right? So it's Sure, a, of course. It's in a continent, right? So the ice is... Uh, well, they, they're claiming it's a continent, but all we, we never seen a, it from an eye view, uh, bird's eye perspective. You've never seen Antarctica. You can see it from a high altitude, but you'll never see it as a continent unless you go and look at the CGI that they show us from Google Maps, which is all, again, CGI, but when you try to look at high altitude footage, uh, uh, aerial footage from the 1500 to 500 feet, you'll never see the full continent of Antarctica as, as a continent. Big. Well, sure, you can say that, but that still doesn't prove it's a continent, right? Um, I mean, if we fly straight over Antarctica, we will end up in Pacific and come back as in the North Pole. Well, that's a presupposition. Like, nobody has ever flown over Antarctica. Planes, because flight paths... Pacific past, is too big, though, isn't it? Like, well, flight paths don't go over the south. They don't go over the north, either. That's a fact. All well, planes fly generally uh, east <laughs> to west. That's true, but because uh, the reason we don't go from south wall or uh, I mean Arctic you know over Arctic or Antarctica is because the Pacific is first of all pretty big and we run out of fuel because we don't have a machine and technology uh, to go take us from there and uh, uh, again today in, if when we go from Alberta to Fiji which is an island in Pacific and uh, when we cross the ocean uh, there is a point where the nearest um, the nearest people uh, uh, for the flight is in the ISS, so like you know, the Internal Space Station, right? Because the nearest uh, land is that far, and the ISS is about uh, 16 kilometers 
of you know in the sky. They say it's a, between about 400 uh, kilometers is what they say it's roughly. Yes, are you? And again, then uh, if it is flat, or then uh, the the concept of time zones so where it comes in and uh, they make apps. Well, uh, you know, I'll, I'll answer time zone quick because that one's easy. Okay. Uh, local sun, local sun, and much smaller. So the sun and moon work like yin and yang over the earth. They simply rotate around the earth like yin and yang. Say the, the sun and the moon are about the size of my, the end of my thumb. And they were rotating around the earth, uh, just you know, east to west, going around like this. And so when the sun is over, say, uh, um, uh, uh, Africa or in Europe, it's, it's light, it's daytime here, it's nighttime over here for us. And then it's the opposite when it's, as it goes the other way. So time zones as it is, as it's following the sun as it goes around. I've driven across Canada all the way west. I followed the sun. It didn't. It didn't go over no uh, imaginary curve. It just faded into the distance. You know. Well, and so the you idea that, you, that you can prove the sun is local through through sun rays. You can triangulate the rays through clouds, perspicular rays. The sun's radiant heat proves it's local from dusk to dawn, from midday. The sun is hot, blazing hot in midday, but at night or dusk to dawn, the sun is much further and you can sun gaze. There's no way if the sun is as big as they say it is and as far as they say it is and it's supposed to be parallel lines, which we don't experience, you would never feel or experience different radiant heat changes such as we do. It doesn't make any sense that Radiant we, heat changes as in? As in the, the amount of warmth from the sun that you experience from midday to the end of the day or morning. Or sun gazing, when you, again, you know what sun gazing is, you can stare at the sun much easier now than you could at noon. You'd be blinded almost, right? You have to train your eyes to even withstand it. But after uh, experience, understanding that it's local, it's just simply moving away from us, right? From our perspective. So that explains seasons pretty easy in time zones because the sun is further away at certain points. It's not going around the ball, it's just moving away from us. Okay, but the, uh, you see the in the globe art theory, right? So like, can I use this example? Yeah, of course, thing, yeah. Right? Hold this one. So you see, right, let's just say, <coughs> hold this. All right, so this is a globe, right? And uh, what science is, what we taught, right? it goes around in an orbit around the sun, right? Yeah, and it, the it has a centric model. Yes, it has a it has also a trajectory of like going this way and this way on an orbit. Yeah, right? the so actual rotation. The yep. actual rotation. Yeah, yeah. Right. So this causes in Norway, it causes twenty four hour sun, six months, in, which yeah. is which just proves that Norway, which is in the north, mm. proves that the sun is circling around the north throughout the whole if that uh, equinox the case, and summer solstice. That's but if that's that happening. But if that was the there case, is, there is there is no twenty four hour sun in Antarctica. If you if you believe that, which is a fact, you can go and see it for yourself. You can go and see it, in, uh, and throughout the state side as well, you, anywhere in the northern hemisphere, you can see the 24-hour sun pretty much in Iceland, uh, right? So, but through your theory, it's supposed to be then 24-hour sun, 365 days a no, year. No, 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 because again, like I'm showing you, it works locally, yin and yang. So uh -huh. the summer solstice, the sun is rotating closer around the north okay. pole. In the equinox, it's kind of spread out further now. In the winter solstice, which is winter in uh, um, Australia and the southern regions, uh, right? And it's, uh, um, sorry, brain fart right now, but you get what I'm saying. It's moving further away from us, so it's way over here, right? So it's now away from Norway, right? And so as the as the summer solstice, uh, winter solstice ends, I mean, it comes back into the equinox in the middle, and then in the summer solstice, it's back throughout the center. So, so it's through summer and e equinox, the sun is closer, still rotating around the, the north. Therefore, you get the 24-hour sun experience. But you do not get a 24-hour sun experience anywhere in the southern regions. You do not get a 24-hour sun in Antarctica. Try and find evidence of it. And the only re show you video footage they give you is from Antarctica. They'll show you, they'll say it's 24-hour sun, but it's edited footage. It's not full 24 hours. They edit out several hours of it. And you can see it on the dial. The shadow disappears and restarts over here. There's no 24-hour sun. If there is, we should be able to observe it. There should be plenty of footage of it, but it doesn't exist. So, I mean, that really shows you local sun. It, yes, it goes around the north. It doesn't prove it's a globe, though. It just proves that the sun is moving and geocentrically. How, and how big the, is the sun? Uh, well, I'm not even going to speculate, but it's, it's it's fairly close, considerably, to what they're telling us it is, right? Okay. And so the idea that, again, that the Earth is rotating and going around the sun, there's no evidence to prove that. Like, 
if you understand the heliocentric model and say the sun is 93 million miles away and the earth is spinning a thousand miles at the equator going around the sun at 66.6 thousand miles every uh you know an hour or whatever a year going around the sun and then the sun is supposedly going around the milky way you know over 500,000 miles an hour or you know whatever it is mm -hmm. and then throughout that the great attractor all these motions happening crazy moving all this motion uh, throughout the solar system and earth we see the same constellations every year all year round we see the north star every night throughout the year 365 days a year the north star is always centered never moves and all the other stars rotate around it now if we're moving as they say around the sun and all this motion is happening we should never see the same constellations same star systems two nights in a row and if thinking of it this way if we're on the other side of the sun in the winter time or whatever how is it we still see the same star systems in the north star we should be having to look through the sun to see it we it doesn't change when you're on the other side it may sound silly but when you start to think about these things logically man it doesn't make sense the constellations and the north star prove that we live in a geocentric universe that the stars rotate around us all right all right so let's okay okay I'll go. No, I'll go. Hold on, hold on. So I'm saying, saying well, that's well, let me ask one. Okay. <laughs> no, I just have a question. Right? So let's say Earth is flat, it's just like this, right? Let's say this is Earth, right? This is flat, right? Now, I think Sun is big enough that uh, we should project light yeah, on the whole thing. The whole thing, right? Well, it's not though. That's why. That's how we can show. Like I, like I explained with crispuscular rays. Like you ever notice through the clouds sometimes? When the sun's going over the clouds and you see sun rays shining through yeah. and they're on an angle are they not they're not parallel lines they're on an angle which triangulate to what a local point there's no way if it was 93 million miles away okay it would project uh, those kind of sun rays so when you understand that you can see that's projecting local sun rays over a flat but model let me, but let me right? tell you why it's why it's why it's not straight though yep. because uh you see in science why you think it's not straight well, you know, the science says, right? So science says the prism and the refraction. And clouds are made of water. Yep. So the, ra the, the, the whole rays, atmosphere is made of water vapor. The, the rays goes through the water and the water acts as a prism. Yep. Which, of course, yep. which the words say, which the words, the, the, the rays of the... Uh, yeah, of we, the we see the apparent sun. Where we see the sun is not its actual location. That's physics. Like, it's obviously being projected to a certain point. But no matter where it's being projected from, you'd see the lights from a prism would not triangulate. They would go all over the place. It would be projected in different angles. It would be, again, not always showing a singular point. Always shows a singular point of view, a triangulation point. Now, you can say that it's a prism effect, but that doesn't prove what, you know, that it's 93 million miles away. For instance, you know that they've been speculating the distance of the sun for hundreds of years. They've never had a final conclusion of how far it is. You know, it, it used to be, uh, you know, you know, a few thousand miles away. Then it went to a million miles away, and then 50, and now it's 93. It's all pure conjecture. But Everything about the stars and the constellations—it's all based on pure conjecture. But where does it say it was 3,000 miles away before? Pardon me? But where, where does it say that it was 3,000 miles away? Uh, well, you'll never see that mainstream science. This is just through local, uh, local astronomers essentially who. You know using instruments that again through triangulation speculate that that's again a rough number but that makes more sense when you start to use uh, the scientific method you know when you can test these things observe them and repeat them all the tests show local sun it's just it's just that's what we observe we observe while they're laying flat again flat earth it's not a claim it's an obs it's an observation that the fact that they tell you the, the story that they give us that the earth is a spinning globe that's a claim and so the burden of proof is on the globe believer because you have to prove to yourself what it is I certainly don't want you to believe what I'm telling you here today I would only hope that you can go and challenge these things for yourself to prove to you for yourself what you, what you believe okay look at the look behind you there that's propaganda right there a big giant globe just like in every television show television programming every space show 
every Universal movie has a big globe on it. Even before they had a real picture of a globe, they were showing you a picture of the globe in the 20s, the Universal pictures. Okay. It's, it's but in the big propaganda, man. It was Aristotle who confirmed that the Earth was globe, right? Aristotle was a philosopher, uh, a scientist. Well, that's movie. hearsay, essentially. They say Aristotle, and then you go back to, okay, Aristophanes, and you can go back to the Greeks who's using shadows and sticks, which is completely observable and testable with a flat model as well even Neil deGrasse says it's okay, completely okay. Yeah, you can do the same gonna... test that Aristotle did with the sticks uh, or sorry Aristophanes did with the sticks to show you it's flat uh, on a stick shadowing right you can do it with the globe or the flat model so using Greek mythology these Greeks and old you know ancients to say that, that that's hearsay when it goes back to Copernicus who kind of invented the, the model of the globe Again, these guys are uh, basically basing off of uh, pure conjecture. They're, you know, presenting a model when all maps have been known to be flat. This is a, a real map from the 1800s, the Gleason's map, the Peterson projections maps, a flat map. Even the original uh, Mercator's map, which is the globe model, is based off the Mercator's map, is a flat projection. All of uh, um, okay, but then let me complete my sentence. That Aristotle observed, right, that he saw a ship going in over the, the horizon, horizon right yeah. so if the flat earth was is it as you say is it then supposed to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller <laughs> but what he observed was going down from horizon and well it, it does get smaller actually it goes down the horizon. it's called the vanishing point for instance this is an old picture it's using telegraphs not telephone poles what do you experience here when you look farther away the telephones get small poles get bigger or smaller it gets smaller. You can observe this for yourself. Any long hotel uh, corridors, you can see the doors get smaller. That's perspective. It's convergence. Everything converges to a distance. It's perspective. That's how it works. So you can't deny things get smaller at a distance. So, and where the horizon, where the horizon is, is where the sky meets the earth, essentially. So to say a ship disappears over the horizon, it's simply just vanishing from your point of view perspective but it's not you, vanishing no it, it is down. no yeah, it is maybe that's it's not getting a, that, smaller because it's going down uh, uh, that's no, 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 no that's not true that that's uh, okay. that's but a presupposition though right the idea that it's going down is not true it's you okay. the bottom disappears first and let me explain this the bottom disappears through a lot of things the Fata Morgana mirage effect which is refraction off the water uh, so you will see first of all the mirage effect which you can get on roads you know long distance in dry weather you get the mirage effect that the car disappears that's the same effect that's happening on the oceans and the lakes. The boats disappear. You take a telescope or a high zoom uh, camera, I, which I've done these tests for myself. I got an 83 times zoom P900 camera, and it's gone from the perspective view from your eye. But as soon as you zoom it back in, you get the full thing in view. You can do this for yourself. The only thing that makes it disappear is uh, atmosphere uh, uh, lensing effects, you know, pollution, weather that's obstructing your view. That's, that's a fact that these things that we even said, like you get that lensing effect through the molecules in the air, right? That's the only thing that makes things disappear from you. So the idea that the bottom goes first, again, that's, that's that mirage effect that's happening. You take a zoom or a telescope, it comes right back into perspective. So that completely debunks the idea that ship disappears over a horizon. It's, again, just perspective. Things vanish from your point of view. Here is uh, an example as well. If you were to look out on the lake, you do not experience any kind of... If you think ships disappear from two, three miles away from you, then how come we can see over a 60 mile to 100 mile radius here on the lake and we don't see a bulge? We should see over 900 feet of curvature from here to Toronto. We can see the entire Toronto skyline. At, uh, the, the sky dome is 280 feet roughly. We and can see the whole thing. From here? from here, it's about uh, 40, 40 miles. In miles, yeah. You look at the skylines in the distance, you don't see the buildings going backwards on an angle. We don't experience any sort of curvature in our view. We don't see a bulge. Like, again, I'm not going to sit here and argue with about this. I, I know that as a fact what they're saying. So, you, on your own time, please look into it. Don't believe me. We can see way too far. That's a fact. We can see way too far. And many tests have proven through laser tests, through uh, hieroglyphic, through all kinds of things where we can prove with across light. oceans and many far distances. That we can see the laser from the shore shining on a mirror or anything right across there's tons of video footage showing this you can do these tests yourself so when you start to to really test the those theories 
there's no way we should be able to see these. There's, there should be a, a bulge effect in the middle of our, our viewpoint, you know? It just it doesn't make sense that we can see too far. There would be a bulge effect if we were giants because the Earth is pretty well, What about from planes big. then? How come you can't see any curvature from a plane? Planes don't adjust for curvature, that's a fact. Well, Gyroscopes don't go okay. upside down when they fly on the other then side of the Earth. According to uh, flat, uh, flat Earth, if we are in a plane, then I should be able to see Pakistan from here. No, that's not true. That's, not? that's a presupposition. Well, Flyer Society, first of all, is disinformation. It's a, so it's a fun. campaign of propaganda through the government. What we believe, uh, we don't believe Earth is a disc accelerating through space. That's a bunch of nonsense. So it's not and the, again, we just talked about how you can only see so far due to all kinds of things, lensing the atmosphere, all kinds of things will cause distortion from your view. And so it's retarded to think that you can see forever. It's just nonsense. So do you think, oh, why can't we see China? Well, it's your common sense. You can't see more than a few hundred feet sometimes in a But then I'm also 40,000 feet in the air. You still have atmosphere uh, lensing. You still have all those things. You have clouds. You have horizon line, which meets and everything converges, right? At the furthest okay. point. Okay, well, let's just Again, say again, curvature. Not, Planes do not adjust for a curve. You do not see a curve from a... When we're about, you said giants. To be you were giants, you see a bulge. Well, you don't see a bulge from a plane. I do believe giants may have existed in the past and probably still do in other regions of earth but that's besides from here and there the yeah. idea that we okay so let's say uh we're from pakistan right when we came here uh our flight uh so pakistan is about here right yeah so we uh we came like this you know we crossed all uh, like africa and everything <coughs> and we saw i saw everything right yeah and then we came there uh, we came here how come we just didn't go like this this thing right here how come we just didn't well, you did probably come more like this, right? I mean, it depends There's on the flight you take. That, uh, uh, flight does not go through the, uh, an ocean, any ocean. First, because uh, because it is not near to land. So in case of emergency, it's gone. So that's why they choose the bigger route. So for example, uh, from Canada, uh, going from Canada to Pakistan, they go uh, crossing through Greenland, Ireland, England, Ukraine, and then going down to Pakistan as in a curve, right? But if you say that it's a flat Earth, then they should just go straight from uh, from Arctic, you know, above Arctic. Well, there's no polar sure. flights. No flights ever go across the uh, the uh, North or South Pole. Or you just got that from me. It's flat. Going. It's flat? 100%. Yeah, you know it, brother. Yeah. How long? Call me crazy. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the horizon, man. Where do you see a curve? Yep. Please, somebody explain that to me. That's what I'm saying, man. You don't. We don't experience curvature. Right you see a curve. there. No bulge. Do you see uh, when when water reaches its flat plane, does it curve? Flat plane is it? If, if water always finds its level, how is it curving over the world? If the whole world is. If the Earth is 71 percent water, <laughs> water always finds its level. At a thousand miles per hour. Yes. Yet the clouds in the sky are still. They're not still. Well, they move with the wind. Of course, yeah. But they're not spinning at a thousand. If we were spinning at a thousand miles per hour, you wouldn't even see that freaking cloud. Okay, here's the thing. If you're going in a car, going 100 miles on a highway, and you bounce the ball inside the car, shouldn't it hit the back window? No, yeah, that's, an in, that's an enclosed system. That's completely so different. Go on top atmosphere. of the car and do that. No, the atmosphere. Okay, you can. You, you can. can sit on exactly. top of the car, throw it, and goes yeah. back. Bernoulli inside doesn't work the car, then. You throw it up. You're sitting in a back. seat, dude. I got one, I got okay, one better for you. Car. <laughs> And the atmosphere is the enclosing. I got one better for you. Yes. If the Earth is spinning, yes. how come planes don't go the opposite direction of the rotation and get there a thousand times faster? They actually do. From they here. don't. Name uh, one no, flight that gets there flight. faster. They do use different flight patterns. So yeah. Plus there's wind that you have to No take planes go the opposite direction. From Canada. Okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> to get there faster. From Canada to Pakistan, the flight is 14 hours. But coming from Pakistan Again, like to you Canada, they you, change the flight pattern. You, exactly. You, you already made this observation. You, you fly one way, and other ways you fly another way. It's just the flight pattern. It's yeah, just, you don't, that's you don't, just you're the path. Plane, it's you're always not, you're not the same navigating path. in the plane where you fly. It, it, actually, the navigation is on the plane. Uh, and on the, yeah, on the, your, yeah, the uh, guy that's flying. But, but you also don't know you the navigation's on the TV though. That's fine, man, but it doesn't matter. You can't track your speed by the way. Some planes are faster than others. That's true. Depending on the size of the plane. And right, and the other big thing that actually works with planes, again, is jet streams. That's the number one reason why planes are faster and slower is jet streams. What they're what jet streams are on. And okay, if you look at the uh, azimuthal equidistant map projection, 
shows jet streams, which they took off online now because they don't want you seeing. It's pretty obvious it works on a flat model. They make sense on a flat model that the jet streams rotate around the North Pole. They don't make sense on the globe. They're all over the place. So every pilot in the world knows that. Ask a pilot next time you see or you fly if they adjust for curvature, if a gyroscopes go upside down, if they think the Earth is flat. They'll probably answer all of those that as taken, flat Earth. Uh, what is it, like a level or something on a, uh, on a phone? Yep. And they fly like half like, and it's the exact same. Yeah, I mean, you could take a level all the way across. It's kind of a what about gravity? redundant thing, but. What about gravity? Relative density. density. Relative density. density. Why does it okay, go this way is more than air. If I drop it, it's going to fall into the flat surface. If you drop it, it's going to go down. Put helium in a balloon. That's right? density. Because and, the helium and inside that balloon is lighter than the air. No force is forcing that. You can take, you can balance that air, and it'll float and not move in a clear, non-windy day. There's no force pushing it down. Birds and bees and all kinds of bugs and stuff would not be able to jump and fly so freely if there was such a force of gravity that's so strong they'll hold the oceans but down. It, but it's a uh, they resistance. It counts for something. If you if you put a feather and it comes down, right? Okay. If that is the case, then uh, how come density? So the object of two different uh, material, let's just say a rock and a pencil, all right? They have two different densities. Do we agree? Yeah. Yet when they when you leave them, it goes down to the earth at the same speed. You sure the one go faster than the other? You get high enough in height. Uh, no matter how high we go, it's going well, to if you were to take them both right now and drop them, yes. the rock would fall quicker. Okay, so, let's test this right now. To a degree, after after a certain height, That's like it would, it'll height. accelerate. Don't you anything dropping at a certain height will start to accelerate. Yeah. So yeah. if it's heavier, it's going to accelerate more. So if I if I drop a heavy object. Against uh, we need we need a high speed uh, camera. Against, really, uh, <laughs> against uh, oh, the test has been done. So no, I know, I know it is. Right? I know it has, and they I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not denying that. Yeah, that doesn't prove <laughs> gravity exists. That just proves uh, an acceleration what? toward the ground. But what causes acceleration? Dielectric uh, plane, possibly the, the electrostatic, uh, electromagnetic activity of the Earth, possibly. If you ever looked into the uh, electric universe theory, you understand yeah. that. The Earth is a grounding point, and for every meter you go up, there's 100 volts of electricity. For every meter you go up, 100 volts? Planes have to de-static themselves. It's electrical. We have electrical storms. Everything is electrical in the universe. Nikola Tesla, one of the founders of AC current, yes, the hydroelectric dam in Niagara man, Falls. Like one of the best guys who ever lived, to this day, we use over 700 of his patents. You know, he's, he still doesn't have a Nobel Prize. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they have actually the Nikola it's Tesla so cool. Festival right here in this area every year. Uh, so I would recommend checking it out. It's in July usually. So saying every meter we go up, there's a hundred meters. It's electrically is what I'm saying. The idea the that of... static, there's a static charge to the earth and it, it can be explained with a dielectric acceleration that it's the charge of the, the earth is attracting y up is up and down is down. And who came up with the dielectric electric? Uh, a lot of people actually. Well, there's Again, there's, there's so many different theories out there, but there's a lot of there's a lot of people right now just trying is to understand a, the world, there right? Scientific and mathematic background? There's a lot of scientific argument to it. And if you there's look into it for yourself, experiment. yeah, actually, there's the Thunderbolts project, look it up, man. I'm telling you, they're not flat earth people. They're all about the electric universe, though. It's been proven that the earth is very much electric. Storms are all electrical, man. This is, it's evident that everything is electric in this universe. Antennas, radio waves, our own emotions, they all work on, vibrate on a wavelength. Microwave radiations, everything. Should I be able to like stick out a uh, metal rod up my house and I should get like electricity? Uh, well, if you harness it properly as Nikola Tesla was trying to do, look up the Wardenclyffe Tower. Over a hundred years ago, Nikola Tesla had built a tower. Yeah, I believe it was over 200 it feet. It, not to collect. Well, how do you think it was distributing it? It was collecting it from above and it was wireless transmission of electricity conducted through the ground. He was getting for free from the sky, from the earth. I'm just curious, do you guys believe that we went to the moon? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay, I have a question. Uh, what about the eclipse then? Have you looked into the like... Okay. Yeah, what about the eclipse? So let's say it's so eclipse happened, right? Yeah. So let's say this is the sun, right? And this is the earth, and yeah. this is the moon, right? Yeah. If you look at... So the, you see the eclipse... The, the shadow, the sky, which... Like uh, the so you're talking about the solar eclipse or the uh, lunar eclipse? So the, the lunar where you see the shadow on the moon, you mean, right? Okay, yeah. Let's talk about that one, right? Yeah. So if earth was 
flat, right? So yeah. Then it creates you, you see because no. the moon was moon okay, Well, that's the presupposition that the Earth is a disk floating in space, though. Yeah, okay. So that's we're saying they Earth, they I'm saying they myself, they Earth is an endless plane. There's no edge, it goes on forever. And space is completely flat. And therefore, what we see a shadow on the moon, there's no evidence that is a shadow of the Earth. It'd be disproportionately wrong if it was the actual shadow. There's no evidence of footage from space showing you the eclipse of the, the moon, the sun, showing you the shadow from Earth. You'll never see that. There's no evidence to prove through video footage. So, and again, I would say looking up and saying, uh, Second of all, how is there a camera? The, the there's a bird. Thing ever to land on the moon yeah, the that doesn't mean land, we're a, a we are a bird. You know, it's like uh, seeing land. is not believing to what we see you above the celestial bodies. The the, 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 uh, the, the eclipses prove nothing about where we live. <laughs> okay. Everything that's no, going on in the sky uh, is yeah, not observable ending, to what they're telling us. You cannot. You can see. Okay, some kind of does look like a sort of a round observation on the moon on the lunar eclipse, but it's not a camera from below. Wait, the, the, the amount of time that the Earth is supposed to be spinning yeah, and the amount of time that the shadow is projecting so over it, it doesn't why correlate. The two don't match up properly, like right? So when you really start to dissect what believing, the telling is happening yeah. and use you know the real scientific method and, and break they, it down, it just they failed, that's they not evidence that we live on the globe. It's just it's not enough to prove to me, you know. So it just doesn't prove anything. It, it's a mystery. Now, uh, actually, um, you guys are from uh, Pakistan. You might be familiar with Rahu Ketu. The, oh, their bodies orbit in the Earth. There could be negative bodies that ca possibly cause the effects of the, uh, the eclipses. We don't know. Again, it's speculation. It's an ancient theory. But check it out. Rahu Ketu. Uh, it's used in a lot of religions, especially in the, in the Middle East. If you had one lie that could make... 56 million and, every single you know, day. There's just so much to look into. I can't, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, expect you to believe me here today. I would only help yeah, you look yeah, into yeah, these yeah, things yeah, on your own, right? Um, like, do you believe in God? Do you believe in a creator? Um, exactly, I do too. I don't believe in, I don't believe in biblical religion myself, but I absolutely do believe in a creator, in creation, that we are intelligent design. That comes into, we didn't evolve from monkeys. That all comes from the Big Bang Theory and the Gravity Theory. Those are all, again, pure conjecture based off of, uh, you know, the theory of gravity, which is still a theory, never been proven. So, if you can't prove gravity, Astrology, or sorry, astronomy and evolution, it all goes out the window. So, the idea for them to prove the globe, for them to prove that the uh, celestial bodies are as they say, and the solar systems as they say, it's all held together like magic, like glue, called gravity. Right? So, if you take away gravity, then none of that exists. It's as to, none of it can be proven. Just like the sun is just a light. So, what? is making this light. There must Actually, be God. a source to God. it. Yeah. Well, God doesn't do anything that yeah, he, he created about. everything. He did create anything, yeah. but out of something. There was out of something, reason. sure. That there not not nothing like the Big Bang claims. So are, there, you, are you Christian? Uh, I'm not Christian. I do believe in a creator though, but I'm, I'm not biblical. No? Absolutely there, believe in a creator. Okay. There's no denying it. So Can I give you something? Sure, man. If, I already believe the earth is flat, so you don't Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to are you well, going to heaven? Yeah. Are you going to I believe hell is on earth. Are you going to, heaven? No, I don't. <laughs> to a degree. The, the mind control of it. See, I'm more of a spiritual consciousness kind of person, right? I absolutely believe in like dream realm, shamanism. I've been doing a shamanic so practice. We can't that, uh, prove these things. That the sun, it's, uh, it's, like, it's like light. Well, obviously. <laughs> I mean, but something is creating the light. I believe something to create the light myself as well. I don't believe it's just some magical thing that came from nothing, like the Big Bang. I don't believe that there is a million. I don't believe that there is sextillion amount of planets and suns throughout. Gal I don't believe that. If you study the electrical universe. It's well uh, theorized that the Earth is a pla is plasma through ionized gases, essentially not burning helium and all kinds of crap. But it's actually plasma. No, it's not heated though as much. It's electrical though. It's hot. It's projecting heat, which is being magnified through the lenses of the atmosphere. But it's not a burning ball of gas. Are you going? Where? Are you going to heaven? I don't know. What's that? That's not for us to decide. At first and second. 
Yeah, so Jesus died. What about the periodic earth? table? Then? But the Bible does say a lot about flat earth. The, the Bible says the earth is immovable, talks about the four corners, the pillars of the earth. There is, I think, over 200 verses that mention basic stuff. So you do. Oh, I'm familiar. I don't dis. I don't discredit the Bible. I actually believe there's merit to it. But I just can't believe words from a book that's constantly been rewritten and translated from the foreign languages. You know, I just. I. I believe if you believe everything we know about in the science community has been manipulated, I have to believe that the Bible has also been corrupted and, and changed throughout the times. You know, I will so. Say this, though. I see why you say that, but at the same time, God's word can't be touched. He said he'll preserve his word. He never so said anybody, that in the Bible. Anybody that would try to dis, like, distort see, his I, word. I don't try, and to, like I said, to, to discredit it, but I, I still won't, I won't take it for what it is for granted because when you come into the flat earth reality and everything else, you you know this, you have to question everything. And that includes our, our, my, our beliefs in anything. So, you I mean, at some degree, at some small percentage, you have to be able to question even the most firm beliefs you have to be not. And if you don't, then I just, it's, we all have our own opinions. We're all entitled to that. And I think we all need to respect each other for each other's opinions, right? We I mean, should never force someone's uh, belief on each other. Again, like with these guys, anybody here today, I'm like, don't believe me. Hey, no, I'm Look into it for force. yourself, right? So, I'm just trying to spread because, again, there's yep, always... Nothing there's wrong always, with that, brother. There's there's nothing wrong with it, right? Okay. Uh, truth is the question. truth, right? The one truth is question. the truth. So, Jesus said, I'm the truth, the way, and the light. No one yeah, comes from the by me. One last question. One last question. I know. Okay. These guys have to go. All right. In uh, Sri Lanka. Not I lived bad, two eh? years. Not as bad as they were last week. <laughs> uh, two years, I was in uh, Sri Lanka, and I noticed that a day start like sunset to sunrise. It was about 13 hours, all right? And uh, then in Canada, it's more like 18 hours. So how does the flat earth experience this? Uh, the actual time of daylight? Well, it depends where you are along the and where the sun is along its path, right? Again, when we talked about the the winter to summer solstice and the equinox, so the like, sun's pattern is mm -hmm. going to be closer to you if you're in the northern slash hemisphere. But you said or it moves, you're right? going to be further away from you, yeah, during, moves, throughout right? the season. So depending so on what time of the year so you're so observing the sun, so it moves down, right? It moves away from your perspective. It moves, it no, not like this. Eventually, it spirals almost. Yes. Uh, well, this is we don't know this for uh, sure. We suspect that it's rotating in, in a circle, right? That it's going from here and then so the equinox. It's going outer, and then throughout the winter solstice, it's, it's rotated, spiraling in a wider circle. So, if you're in the more uh, more uh, southern regions, then you know, uh, in the summer solstice, you're going to experience more daylight when you're in the northern region than you are the southern. But if the sun is in the uh, uh, southern region and you're in the northern, then it's going to be vice versa, the opposite, right? But then, shouldn't uh, in Sri Lanka, when I observe the sun, it should go like up down um, well so you it's again convergence and everything time. works in a, in a perspective view so you'll see the sun always above you at midday yeah. right and then and you'll uh, see it so it always looks like it comes up and then down right which you may think well it's because we're rotating well that's how perspective works so again the telephone pole thing i showed you before right same thing everything kind of it goes up and down in that your view. Like it gets bigger when it's closer to you, smaller when it's further from you. I know, I think, uh, so, you know, it's just perspective, you right? Thank you so much, man. It was very uh, nice talking to you. You too. Thanks no, for letting me uh, in. And I never stop questioning things, bro. That's true. Yes. I'll, I'll give you uh, a little more information if you'd like. Uh, just things so that you seem like you're a little interested in check one, questioning things. So, um, these are just some uh, some uh, uh, tests you can uh, look into, you know, just in, like I said, the Michael Morley experiment and uh, just, some, just some red pill uh, thought projections there. And uh, there's an email there if you have any questions. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, you can check it out as well. It's uh, not right on there, but uh, Scuba Dracula. Well, so the thing is, <laughs> uh, you probably see yourself on, on there maybe, I don't know, but uh, I, I just, just this out here, head in, head in, yeah, hand in red pills and uh, again, just provoking thought, you know, because we, we can't believe everything that we're told. Thank you know? so much, I appreciate it. Question the moon landing if you haven't. If you believe in the moon landing, look up uh, um, uh, a funny thing happened on, to the, way, on the way to the moon. It's a very good documentary on YouTube. It's easily debunked that astronauts gone wild. No astronaut will swear on the Bible that they've gone to the moon. 9-11, uh, what do you think about 9-11 just quickly? 
Do you believe it was a terrorist attack or do you believe it was a controlled demolition, an inside job? Well, um, I think it was both to some degree, some degree. Because uh, you see how the NATO is in Afghanistan, right? So that's an urban country, we're like very close to where I used to live in Pakistan. Yeah. And uh, the guy that they claim that you know who did 9/11, right? He was for uh, also for a certain time he was in Pakistan, right? And uh, so uh, and how does that make you feel after that all happened, right? I think discriminatory. You, you did you felt like people were. You know, around that time, looking at you more differently, or when you traveled, for instance. Like, I, the 9-11 for me, essentially, it just goes to prove the control mechanism. Is every since 9-11, we've all been treated like terrorists. Every one of us. You gotta, you're interrogated when you want to fly. You, you're put through radiation machines, which is not good for you. You know, these, these things are just... Uh, absurd the, the idea we're treated like criminals anytime we want to go anywhere and and since 9-11 like, if you look up for evidence in 9-11 it's really obvious that it was a planned demolition it's controlled demolition is it's so self-evident that how they landed the buildings were disintegrated when they landed through military thermite we believe uh, the buildings no buildings of that big of any buildings has ever collapsed like that due from fire or you know, it's, it's impossible. So and when, was, when you look at any kind of buildings that collapsed, you know? there would be a pancake effect. That's the buildings were completely disintegrated. Seven buildings went down. There was no evidences of plane in any of them. Pentagon, there's no evidence of a plane, no video footage. All the eyewitnesses at 9-11, none of them ever actually saw a plane. They all seen it on TV. We don't believe any planes actually hit the towers. Possibly missiles. Even all the eyewitness testimonies, which you won't find in the official story, all but you can find them if you look for them uh, on my YouTube channel. I have some great documentaries about it as well. Uh, but they all explain that they heard multiple explosions, multiple explosions showing layered effects, explosions coming from the basement. It's just it's self-evident that the buildings were completely knocked down. Again, that just explains stuff like 9/11, the moon landings, uh, just to, just to plant seeds if you was mine and to see for yourself. Because we are being censored. The internet is completely censored. Anything flat Earth or 9/11, it's being full of misinformation. You're being directed through nonsense debunking, which is not relevant. So, you know, take your own time, look into it. You know, don't fear the truth. You too, man. Thanks, thanks, guys, for stopping by. Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? He said that the world is round. Oh, he's crazy. Man. I think the world isn't flat at all, I think it's round like a ball. The world is flat at the brim of your hat, and that is very plain. I know that I'm right, oh, I know that I'm right, when I say that the world is round. Oh, I'm right, oh, I'm right. Yeah, I usually put my stuff on YouTube, yeah. You know what, why? To, uh, to encourage other people to come out and do this, you know? Because we can't, we can't get our information online anymore, you know? Well, it's really, uh, again, like, I was it's really hard to get people to look into these things uh, when, when yeah, everything's yeah, centered yeah, online. Yeah. How are you doing, guys? I, I you want some information? Some well, flyers? Good, you sure, man? Uh, it's free, uh, man. Yeah, it's yeah. free. It's free to think, man. Yeah, like no, there's no, there's no harm in looking into it. My, my YouTube is a scuba dragon. It's not written now. Scuba dragon. There, there's the actually all here. This is all YouTube. All, of, all these channels. Everything that you, find. So you can, you can watch the videos on there. Lots of stuff. Guys, take Absolutely. care. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? What is flat Earth. You ever heard about the Flat Earth? Yeah. Do you think the Flat Earth is flat? I do. Can I hear your reasonings? I'm sure. curious. Uh, well, when I say Earth, what do you think of? Big blue ball. Like this, right? The yeah. globe, right? Yeah. But uh, you haven't seen Earth uh, from this perspective, correct? Not a lot, of course, right? Well, like from satellite imaging, that's all. Right, which which is uh, all CGI, a lot of it. The only imaging that's real, I think, is high altitude stuff, and they just use a distorted lens. But you've never seen the full globe in perspective. There's no real pictures of the globe. You can Google if you want. But they're all CGI. Like pictures of like different. Like, 
like other planets. That's what I'm okay, yeah. so the celestial bodies are essentially they're just lights in the sky, as far as we know right now, right? I mean, I personally have observed with my own telescope with a, a high zoom uh, lens camera, which I have a P900, so an E3 optical lens zoom, and it has digital zoom on top of that. And I can zoom right into the craters of the moon, I can zoom in to Venus and Mars, um, in the stars even. Are they flat? And, and, well, they're uh, 2D in your perspective. You cannot see 3D from the, your perspective anywhere, so you can't prove that they're spherical objects. You can't even prove that they're what they say they are, because all those objects we see up there are nothing like the images they give us from NASA CGI. Admittedly, they show you it's CGI artist rendering. It's a fact. You can't find a real picture of a satellite even. Mm -hmm. I know that's a fact. I've uh, seen that. I know you're talking We about. believe satellites are all high altitude balloons, essentially only within, uh, you know, 100,000 or so feet. That's a fact that they use them. Look up Project Loon. Google uses that for uh, internet and stuff on region, far regions that don't have uh, internet. So we're satellites then, right? 99% of the world's communications are run by underground uh, cables, sea cables. So again, so to say satellites are real, how, how come they're not turning around on the, these satellites or supposedly going to Mars and Jupiter and take a picture of the Earth, a real one? If they've gone to the moon 50 years ago, how come they haven't gone back? They claim the, they've lost all the telemetry data and they, they haven't gone back yet. They're claiming, they keep saying they're gonna go like back, they're gonna Mars go back. Rover? Well, again, if they have a rover on Mars, which is ridiculous, because yes, if they have a rover on Mars, what do you think the time delay would be from here to Mars? It would be ridiculous. <laughs> There's no way they can control some remote uh, RV over there completely, you know, aimlessly, blindedly. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Even when they claim to land on the moon, you know, they're communicating. There should be, a, like, I think it's a several minutes delay. And yet they're communicating back within seconds. It's just yeah. nonsense to believe that they were actually on the moon. Even the astronauts who supposedly landed on the moon, which by the way, all astronauts are Freemasons. And when it comes down to our basic observations and all the scientific methods you can use to prove about the flat Earth of the globe, because again, flat Earth is not a claim. It's an observation, right? Uh, spinning globe, that's a claim. Because everything you see, all the waters, uh, <laughs> every ocean, lake, is completely flat. All the horizon lines are flat. You don't experience curvature. There's no bulge effect. You know, we can see Toronto on a clear day, straight across. You can see the whole entire sky dome, 280 feet. It may seem silly, but when you start to look into it, it's uh, it's quite obvious. There's no curvature. Boats don't disappear over the horizon. They just simply vanish from your perspective. Uh, it's basically a converging point, right? Everything gets smaller as, a, as it gets further out of your perspective. It's like, look, a line of telephone poles, for instance, like, and it's smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So that's just perspective. Um, so again, it's it's all observational tests and repeatable science shows you're just flat and motionless. So, I mean, you have so to do come you still to the believe that there's like a core of the earth and like stuff uh, like that. Well, even mainstream science has no real idea. It's conjecture uh, to claim that the earth is a molten core when they've only technically dug eight miles in Russia. It's the deepest point they've ever dug in the earth is eight miles that we know of. Now if you understand what they say the globe is, they're saying the globe is a circumference of uh, you know 24,900 miles, right? 40 kilometers, roughly, 1,000 kilometers roughly, right? Um, there's no way that they know the center of that, which would be over 12,000 miles at eight miles. There's no way they know what the metal is, right? So what the middle is doesn't prove or disprove flat earth or the globe really because like, I believe in plate tectonics as well that there is shifting stuff down there. You know, I don't whether or not it causes tidal waves and this and that. I, I can't say for certain, but that still doesn't prove the actual shape of the earth. When you think of the earth as a container for the uh, for the oceans, it's always flat and motionless. You're, you're smart. You're actually genuinely like. Everyone has giving their own me, beliefs. It's, it's, you're giving me facts, but I'll give you some information you can take with you. Man, exactly. And I'm, I'm about like test to approval facts. myself. So, like, uh, with flat Earth again, like it. Um, I've come to the realization, the realization there is a creator. Again, I'm not a visible person, but I do believe in intelligent design. 
yeah. I believe that spiritual consciousness, things like this, are very much real. As an indigenous person, I believe that there is a creator. Oh, there, there you go. And I uh, totally respect the indigenous communities. And I think it's ridiculous how, you know, Canada celebrates over 150 years of indigenous genocide. You know, and it's, it, yeah, it's not enough people realize even a lot of the uh, aboriginals and indigenous peoples of our land all have their own beliefs and that the spiritual mm -hmm. entities very much exist. Uh, I didn't. I myself am now studying uh, shamanism, mm -hmm. so I'm, I really believe in shamanic practice. I've been reading a lot of books like uh, Carlos Castaneda and you know uh, separate realities, kind of dream reality. I totally believe in a, in a con consciousness of or a hive mind of consciousness and things like this. And to me, love, creative reality, manifestation, that to me, that's creation. That's that's reality. I don't know. We, we, we experience dreams, we don't know what they are. But you can ask to reject if you've ever looked into that. We've done it, I've done it before. It's crazy. And you see things right before your very own eyes and then wake up and, it, and it's like, wow. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, I, it's very hard to do. Um, some people can do it all the time. I've done it very seldom, like a couple of times in my lifetime. I actually stopped smoking marijuana just so I can start studying my dreams more, remembering them. Uh, if you ever get back into marijuana, I have like a bit, we have a business. Oh yeah? Yeah. yeah. I actually, what I'm into is psychedelics. I, mushrooms, DMC, uh, I have depression, LSD. so I can't. Actually, if you, if like you look into it, really psilocybin cubensis has been well known to cure depression. I would look into it, microdosing. Uh, I started microdosing uh, over a year ago, and I started growing mushrooms as well, which you can buy the spores in Canada, but you're not supposed to grow them. Uh, so you can get your hands on them. Yeah. You know, you're, actually, you're allowed to grow up to three plants now in Canada, which is which, the idea of marijuana being controlled is it's still controlled. It's not legal. It's it's not decriminalized, right? So, but uh, are you guys are you guys local in the area? Or? Yeah, I live. Oh, yeah. I thought that was our yeah, card for a second, card. and I was like, huh? oh my God. I thought that was the card, our card. You have a similar card? Yeah. 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 This ours is, is uh, black and red little now, Vista though. print. That's my email's really on cool there if you have any questions. Why? We had yeah. ours on Vista print, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. And here's actually some more information just to provoke thought. Into it. You know, it comes down to there's a lot of disinformation, right? Yeah. There's a lot of uh, preconceived notionalism, notions and rationalism and uh, you know prejudice towards it um, we're not the flower society that's yeah. a complete mainstream disinformation campaign we're not See, like, claiming the earth is a disc accelerating through space that's nonsense we actually believe space is completely fake as showed on tv uh, i believe the earth is an infinite plane and it could go on forever i believe again like the realms the multi-dimensional levels parallel universes everything we exist Earth is a realm, it's not a planet. Nikola Tesla claimed this, you know, uh, when you look into the electrical universe theory and kind of just shows you everything is vibrating on some sort of level, an electrical uh, plane thing, right? Everything is in wavelengths. Even our emotions, if you think about it, our thoughts, they're transverse waves in a sense, right? Everything is kind of vibrating. You can, you can feel somebody's presence without even hearing them or seeing them. You, know, you can't explain that in science, you know, but when you start to look in the ether and again into the, you know, the vibrations of our, our thought patterns and, and different dimensions, it's really interesting, you know, again, I'm just, you know, throwing things out there right now, I'm just, you know, I think you're a very smart person. I mean, uh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to be open-minded the best I can about everything, you know, about God, and about, uh, about everything we're told, you know, like, you have to come government was corrupted, 9-11 and new landings, like,